Okay, so good morning once again. Um, welcome to all of you who've made it to class. Hope all of you all are okay, doing all right. And welcome to the e-learning students as well. Uh, thank you for joining in um, every time and ensuring that you're doing your, you know, your regular course of work. Uh, hope you're being blessed by you know, the class and uh, you know being able to apply it in your interactions with others as well. Okay, so let's start with a word of prayer and um, we'll move into our lesson. Heavenly Father, we thank you, God, for this new day. Thank you that you have gracefully brought us, Lord. Thank you that um, your presence and your power is made available to us. Father, even as we progress into today's class, learning further, God, uh, we pray that you will equip us adequately to um, help and work with others. Father, we, we ask God that you give us the wisdom we need in um, listening to people, in being able to keen, in understanding where they are at, and also leading them to uh, uh, come alongside with you to resolve their issues, their thoughts, their, their feelings, wherever they are at, Father, that you would uh, equip us even as we learn. Father, we pray that even as we practice these things, that you will give us um, clarity on how to move forward. Lord, I pray for each student here as well as every student going to be listening to this lecture at some point of time. God, that you meet people at their point of need. Father, that you comfort their hearts, you strengthen them. You promised you are our greatest counselor, and we pray, God, that uh, in areas that we need redirection, God, that uh, you, would, you would work alongside with us and we will be teachable, we will be willing to uh, uh, recourse our lives, Lord, according to your desire. Thank you once again uh, for these two hours. We pray that your presence and your power go ahead of us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Okay, so nice to be here again this morning. Hope uh, all of you all are doing good. Yes, I'm well as well. Thank you, Divya. Okay, so let's move uh, uh, to the to what we were uh, looking, uh, we were studying. We started on the stages of uh, counseling. And if you'd like to follow through the notes, I'm on um, page 20, uh, 20. We, we, we're going to be starting from page 26, but we started off with the lesson last time on the stages of counseling, which is at page 22, okay? So um, page 21, sorry. So we're going to, we'll, we'll just uh, quickly have an overview of what we did um, because we started off with the stages of counseling and um, we're going to be doing the second and the third stage today. So before we move into second and third stage, um, we'll just have a quick recap of stage one so that you know you have a good flow of uh, events or a good flow of where we stopped last time. Uh, so just uh, let me just uh, share my screen. OK, all right. So we started last week uh, in talking about the uh, different stages of counseling. Remember, uh, so some of the things that we spoke about is that um, this is a structure, a process um, that you know we need to keep in mind as we are working with people. So it's almost like a guide that we use. Uh, again, we did say it's not something that you follow rigidly step by step. Maybe there are certain times you may need to go back one step or redo one and two again. So it's generally serving as a as a as a point of reference for you. But there is a model that we need to understand what generally happens or what are some of the key elements that needs to take place from one stage to another. So we looked at stage one. We said it's an exploration, that is, you are digging in deeper into the present situation. Now, this present situation, it's just not the, uh, the uh, circumstance that um, you're digging deeper into or looking, um, uh, you know, or exploring, 
but you're also exploring other things about the, the thought process that's going on behind it, the way that they make uh, uh, meaning to it, uh, the way that they feel about a certain a certain situation, and the way that they that you bring them to a point of personalizing the problem, right? So this is where we looked at. I, I'll go through it once again. Stage two is you are getting them to develop a new place or a new a preferred uh, future or a preferred uh, stage or scenario of the situation. So once they come to an understanding, you've brought them to a place of knowing what is it that they may need to progress into, where are the areas that they need to work into so that they could move into stage three, which is the stage, the stage three is the one of the now moving into action or the phase of action where the counselee is actually dealing um, uh, experientially with the problem and uh, taking whatever has happened in stage two identifying what they want what they need what they need to change and trying and working it through certain practical methods or practical activities in in order to get the result that they're looking at so we looked at the stage one last time and i'll quickly just go through this so in stage one what you're doing is uh, as i said not just exploring the situation or the problem that's coming about but there may be uh, a necessity to understand certain uh, other elements like basic life areas or, or how they function in different areas of their life so that you get a more richer um, uh, uh, like, like a richer treasury about what's what is going on in their life. Remember, even as you're exploring, uh, I would say, yeah, you know, let's not keep the eye towards finding problems, but then through these uh, assessment and through these basic life areas that you are assessing, you're also looking for good resources that the person may have in them in order to build in order to work through their problem like for example let's say even as you're assessing you probably uh, you know in a certain situation you you probably assess to see that this person has a good fellowship or has a good uh, uh, has a has a stronger spiritual life right or or they may be emotionally they have a couple of support systems that's really strong who's who can walk alongside with them so when you're exploring uh, yes, you're you're looking deeper to figure out how they deal with life, but don't look at it with a problem focus. Don't look at it with a problem lens. Look at it more from a solution lens, looking at it more from the kind of resources and strengths that they may have that they can use to uh, work through their problem. So again, another point that we had brought about last time in discussion is um, it doesn't, it's not mandatory that you lead them through all of these 10 <clears throat> areas, but what may seem appropriate for the situation that they may be in, okay? Like uh, I think we were talking about, let's suppose they have a certain so let's say they have a physical health issue okay so it may not be necessary to look at all of these details like about their finances or they or um, um maybe even even um probably their uh, certain certain routines that they're going through it may not be necessary so whatever seems really practical around the problem area that they've come if you find out that's that's more than enough it, it doesn't mean that every person you are meeting with, you need to really assess all of these 10 areas. And you will find that that uh, even as you're talking to them, some of this is already coming up in the conversation as you're talking. And you may just need to dig in a little deeper. So don't stall them and say, OK, don't talk about your problem. Hang on. Let me finish 10 of these basic life areas. And now you tell me this. It doesn't have to be like that. You, you intermingle it in a way that becomes a natural conversation. Nevertheless, you keep your mind open to uh, to needing to explore these different areas, and that's why you know these ten basic areas have been put about. Okay, now we we looked at uh, Dennis's case study. We will come back to this case study as we have uh, as we're going to continue this on into the second and the third phase. So in this, uh, uh, what did we focus on? We said the um, the exploration 
area has one is the assessment that is there. Secondly, you are identifying the problem. So what are you doing here is you your once you figured out what the kind of problem is, <clears throat> you are identifying what the kind of uh, um, deeper issues are of the problem. What does the person feel? You know, what is the person's emotional uh, um, uh, emotional space during this time that they are going through the problem? So, so uh, remember, <clears throat> one of the biggest reasons why we need to explore feelings is when fe emotions or feelings are not acknowledged, they can actually cause a lot more of trouble. OK, um, so it is important when you're discussing anything, any. Uh, so this is a, a strong principle. And when you're learning through skills, you will understand this, that whenever you are talking to a person of the, of the problem, uh, don't make it business like. What do I mean by business like getting straight away into, OK, now let's see what we can do about it. OK, in counseling, it's important to really attach the other pieces to this problem. Like a person has a problem, they have a certain emotional experience towards the problem, or they have a certain thought process towards the problem, or they have a certain spiritual experience of the problem. If you remember the five levels of functioning we spoke about right in our earlier class. So whatever the situation may be, Remember not to make it business-like, not to make it, OK, I'm ju they're just here to resolve a problem. We need to tune in to their emotional experiences, because any kind of unacknowledged or unresponded um, uh, emotions has the tendency to cause a lot of trouble, trouble within. So whatever the case may be, let's say um, somebody, uh, uh, you know, you're, you're someone's coming to you with a grief, uh, someone, maybe some loved one of theirs has passed away, right? Now, even as they're emoting to you, the point is not to be in a hurry to get the person to minimize their emotions, allow for the expression of emotions. If you remember, we had a principle like that, right? Uh, expression of emotions, controlled expression of emotions. So allow your counselee to be able to express their emotions and walk with them as long as they feel the need to express those emotions. Because until and unless you know, you're able to take an entire wrap around those emotions, still they're able to face and say, you know, this is what we're feeling, this is what we're going through. We may not be able to make a lot more of um, uh, um, uh, you know, entry into the other parts of it. So first and foremost, in exploration, it is to be able to draw out and clarify those problem feelings. And that's that's very uh, necessary to be able to do that, OK? Once, uh, you know, once now, even as I'm saying once, remember, this, this is not just, OK, you finish this, OK, that's done. Now we get into the next. It's just that it, it rolls in much more easier. Um, when while you're doing that, you're also giving them uh, as they have identified maybe some of those dominant uh, emotions. What you're doing next is to discover what is their goal oriented behavior or the problem behavior. OK, so um, we need to ensure. So what, what do we see by the goal? The goal is you're examining what uh, what goal is the person achieving by this certain behavior? And if you remember um, uh, Dennis's case, we came up with this. You know, he, for him, the goal is uh, he needs something to cope with the disappointment that he's going through. And that good thing, and that thing is alcohol. So the goal was to just cope with the disappointment he's going through. And what did he find to get that goal? It was alcohol. So taking in alcohol was was a way of of getting back to, uh, and we we saw that getting back to the disappointment that he's feeling or disappointment of what he thought his father was doing. Right. So that's that's the next one to be able to identify what is that problem uh, 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 goal, that goal oriented problem or the goal oriented behavior. Once we have gone into that, what are you doing? You're going deeper into understanding the beliefs and the thinking that 
underlie this problem. So there are certain, <clears throat> we've gone through the feelings. Now, next, we're going through the uh, thoughts where you, you're identifying that uh, you're helping to understand what are some of the wrong beliefs that is driving Dennis towards this goal he is pursuing. What is the goal? To get rid of his disappointment. So there are certain thoughts that is, uh, that is coming. Now, it's important that we don't assume these, these uh, thoughts, but then you know, ensure that we, we find an explanation. What is it that they are thinking about? Now, once you have understood what the wrong goal is, you, you're also able to unveil these wrong beliefs that brings about these strong strategies. Now, like for uh, Dennis, one, some of his wrong beliefs were, or uh, uh, basic erroneous beliefs probably were, my father does not love me. He doesn't care about my wishes, right? Now, that's become uh, uh, the, the belief which has brought about. And the strategy that he's using is to take on alcohol so he can get back to his father. Or it could be alcohol will keep me over my pain and disappointment. So whatever it is, to find out what the wrong belief is, here the belief is father doesn't love me. And the wrong strategy is I will teach my father a lesson and thus I will, you know, I will show my father how disappointed I am and then get into alcohol. So that's that's the kind of structure that the person has believed. From there, what do you need to do to help the counselee become aware that they have a contribution towards the problem? So here it's becoming aware that they are also forming a part and parcel of this problem through the way that they have believed erroneously or through the way that they have understood differently. So what, what are we getting them to do? Uh, what I think what the shift is to moving away the blame that a person or a counselee may place on somebody else or on their future or on God or on uh, anything else other than themselves. Okay, So the, the, the best way to get them is to move them back in track and help them acknowledge that there is a contribution that they may be making and to personalize the problem. That means it's to help them become aware of the fact that they need to, that, that the problem is theirs, that you know once they're able to work something out, they will find things changing in their lives. So through this, you know, the example that is given is, you know, maybe for uh, Dennis, it's, it's like, I don't feel fulfilled in my dreams. Uh, and I'm trying to forget the pain by drinking. So he's beginning to say, OK, the reason why I'm drinking is because I don't feel fulfilled. Or the, the reason why, or I, I feel that I will be fulfilled only if I do such and such a thing. So there is a certain uh, belief or a system that he's understood that, you know, I am creating the disappointment for myself because I think only if I become a singer will I be able to um, be somebody important, right? Or only if I'm able to follow this dream, am I going to uh, uh, be able to make something of my life? So he begins to he begins to see how he's contributing to it through the thoughts and the and the uh, and and the way that he plays it out. Next, what are you doing? Is then you're encouraging the counselee to personalize the problem as well as the goal together. So when you're doing that, you're making the counselee aware, not just aware of their contribution to the problem, but you're making them assume the responsibility for what they are doing to change the problem into a goal, OK? Like, for example, uh, if, if, if his problem is a disappointment, then the goal is to ensure that he works out on that disappointment. Or his problem is alcohol, then the goal is to figure out what is causing him to, uh, to, to drink that alcohol, or what disappointment or what beliefs are causing him to uh, to do that. So as a, as the um, example here says, I realize that alcohol is not the solution to take away my anger, disappointment, but working to pursue my dream. So so you're moving the counselor away. I mean, sorry, you're bringing the counsel counselee from realizing, personalizing the problem and the responsibility that they have in working outside of that, uh, of, of trying to figure out that goal, OK? So this is where we ended last time. And this is how we move into stage two. The stage two um, 
which is the understanding. Now, in this one, what you're doing is you're helping the counselee change the beliefs that they may have um, with regard to the problem and make it in alignment to, to a truth, in ma make it in, in um, uh, one with what is with what is the truth okay so so for that we should have ensured that we have done a good uh, uh, um, you know a good uh, back back work you know for un, for exploring we should have done a good back work in helping in really talking about the actual beliefs that the person is talking about remember these aren't suggestions i'm making but when through your questions you are helping the person think about what is it that alcohol has done so some of the questions that you use in the in, you know in the exploration is how do you think alcohol has helped you with this current condition that you are in so then he may say you know alcohol takes away my pain and so then i'm able to deal with it so then you know you challenge that and you say okay how has alcohol actually taken away your pain so they may come up with a with a thought of uh, yeah I, I don't I don't actually pay attention to it so maybe then the question is so does it actually take away your pain does it actually help you resolve the problem so that's when they may come to this yeah I, actually alcohol cannot take away that pain I know I have to face it but I can't do anything about it so you've brought them to that place of uh, of understanding that there, there is a there is a wrong belief there there is something that is not in harmony with, with the truth okay. Or, um, uh, or, or there could there could be so many other other kind of uh, uh, beliefs that they may be holding. So, what are you doing over here is to help them identify the wrong belief, which you've already done in the previous um, uh, previous stage. Here, you're helping them identify the wrong belief and then begin to rework it. And if you remember our stage of modeling, um, sorry, a stage of um, uh, sorry, the model of counseling that we spoke about uh, earlier, where we talk, spoke about the thoughts, the emotions, and uh, the dispute, the ABCDE model. Now, that's what we we would work over here. So here, in goal setting, we help them change their wrong beliefs. So you identify the wrong belief, and then you you help them to dispute that belief, to come to a place of um of changing it so let's let's take take the example of uh, uh, of dennis over here so the uh, remember this this is extremely powerful because all of this comes from the process of our minds process of our of our thinking so when you're re-identifying the wrong belief here the basic wrong belief for dennis is um let's say al alcohol will will uh, help me get over my pain or my disappointment that's his wrong belief, right? Every time I drink alcohol, I don't have to think about my pain or my dis disappointment, okay? Now then, we're disputing the wrong belief. So uh, uh, why are we doing this? Because we know that beneath all problems, there are problem-causing beliefs, which is a lie, which needs to be exposed and disputed. And so you're encouraging your counselee to dispute this lie with everything that is possible with them all right with all the understanding and the ability to do so you're helping them dispute that belief so you you cross question and ask them okay you alcohol this is your thought alcohol will get over my pain and disappointment so first you may need to challenge it to help them see that it doesn't and say okay what is it what kind of a belief do you feel you're able to rework OK, what is it that you would like to look into differently to help you cope with this? All right. So they may come up with with another uh, anything else. They may say, you know, alcohol isn't something I must probably talk to somebody about my pain and disappointment. Right. So that's a good thing that they have identified that alcohol won't help them. Maybe it's something it, it's a. Uh, it's a need to be able to discuss it with somebody or, or some may say, yeah, I may need to take it to prayer or I may really need to um, understand the roots of my pain and my disappointment uh, uh, over, over my father. So that's, that's what you would do to dispute that belief. Then once they have come up with, uh, with understanding that that's something that they need to change, replace it with, with a true belief. So what is a true belief? A true belief is something that is in harmony 
especially for believers with the word of God and that can be supported by scripture. So changing beliefs is extremely powerful. It is this that, that helps with a, with a transformed uh, person, with a transformed personality. And that's what you, you're basically attempting them or helping them to do. So, so here um, it, it is you know, the realization that alcohol cannot take away my pain. I need to face and, or deal with it. Or that maybe um, uh, you know uh, the the wrong the the belief of uh, my my dad wants to harm me saying you know parents have good intentions for for the children maybe the way that he's expressing it is is quite harsh if I were to talk to him if I were to discuss him discuss it and maybe he would be in a better place of understanding okay so so whatever the belief is you are helping the counselee deal or work through that belief. Now, even as you're doing that, even, even as you're ensuring to do that, you're also going to help your, um, uh, your counselee to be able to handle and deal with the emotions that are coming up. Now, even as they you know, begin to uh, find that there are certain thoughts that that have not been helpful certain belief systems that are not that are not going that are not helpful there there are going to be emotions that's going to come up or even in the process of doing it they are going to be emotions that come up so uh, it's important to help them face those emotions feel those emotions because if those emotions aren't faced up if they aren't taken care of it's going to like you know build up over time so uh, the, what you're helping them see is that emotions does not have to have to continue taking on a toll over them. Because the more that you uh, renew your mind, the emotions also, also definitely begin to change. So help them face it, help them label the em uh, emotions. Okay. Also, get them to see what triggers these emotions. So if it, it says discover how they came about, sometimes the, the person needs to, disc, uh, to to find out triggers. Like, for example, maybe he's going to talk to his father and his father may not be supportive at that point of time. Now, that can again trigger that same thought experience that may come up and, you know, begin to feel that disappointment and pain and then going back into the same strategy of drinking. Right. So helping them to to really discover what is going on how are these how are these uh, feelings coming about and also then later helping them to express it in a way that is uh, that is that is helpful so they choose to express those negative emotions with somebody um, maybe maybe a pastor or a counselor say you know they, they come back to you and they're able to discuss it so for example in in De Dennis's case right he, there are certain anger that's resentment, bitterness towards his father that he may be still dealing with despite the change of thought. Like, okay, maybe my father has a good intention uh, for me, but yet uh, the past, the past anger or resentment or bitterness that he has is still there. So you're also working with them to deal with those emotions. Maybe um, uh, you know, bringing them to a place of forgiveness, bringing them to a place of understanding <clears throat> that these emotions aren't being helpful for them, but to be able to uh, bring about a life or or a or an or an emotional experience of uh, freedom or being able to give it up uh, to the to the Lord, to being able to let some things go. So, what are you doing? You're helping him realize that even some of these emotions may be hurting him so much that it is fueling his addiction. Okay, uh, just just because of the of the resentment that is. So, what you what you're doing through this is helping uh, Dennis see that every emotion that's coming about is something that he thinks. His, uh, you know, is against his father, but it's actually against him. It's almost like he's drinking the poison and thinking that his father would die, right? But that isn't the case. Um, you know, you're drinking the poison. You're the one who's going to die, not not somebody else. So similarly, with the emotions, you get so overwhelmed with the emotions, thinking that if I continue to be angry with that person, then I'm teaching the other person a lesson. The other person doesn't even realize, right? So. Uh, so helping Dennis come to coming to a place of accepting, understanding where he is in his emotions, being able to express it and being able to make those changes. All right. So once 
once you're able to come to a place of uh, getting uh, the person to do this, your this this kind of a change with his emotions, with his feelings, the the, the this these um, things that reflect the new thinking, the new feeling, new behavior, then you are ensuring that there is, you know, that that actually gets reflected onto the different area areas of his life, you know, into into the phys especially uh, into areas like, let's say, the physical areas. So you're encouraging him of how, um, you know, he takes care of his body, takes care of his physical health. You're encouraging him about about the emotional space to get him in touch with what his feelings are, the deep resentment or anger or disappointment that he has and working to resolving that. You're getting him to changing the beliefs rational again you know changing beliefs because it helps him to exchange everything that is deceptive into that which is true then volitional you are helping uh, dennis to see that there's a power of choice that he has the choice no matter how his feelings may be he has the power to uh, to to do something differently to influence uh, himself and others differently and spiritually is to being aware about how you know the significance, the worth, the, the the security comes not from his father, not from a career, not from a vocation, but is coming from God. So all of this is something that you're you're trying to uh, map together, even as you help in setting new feelings, new thoughts, new behavior. You're getting them to commit in these five areas or areas of their lives. Okay. Uh, I'm going to stop here just to review to see if there are any questions, any thoughts, um, any reflections, anything. Any questions? Okay, are we all here on the call? Suddenly, I just feel nobody's there. Okay, Jeffina is there. Okay. Yes, we are here. <laughs> okay. All right. So, uh, okay. So then, then I think we'll we'll just move ahead. Uh, yeah. So once we have come up to the, yeah, somebody has a question. Divya, it's clear. Okay. Uh, so once we have moved from that stage of exploring, okay. We move to a place of goal setting. We are helping them personalize the problem, working with them about their thoughts, working with them about their emotions, helping them to make commitments in order to um, uh, uh, whatever renewed belief system, renewed feelings are there. We are helping them to make commitment into different areas. So this is all through a conversation. The next stage is where the rubber meets the road. It's the place of actually moving them into a stage of action. Now, now, often this sometimes becomes the hardest. Okay, Why? Because everything that we've spoken about is actually going to be panned out. You're actually going to plan out how they are going to, uh, you know, they are going to plan out, not you. They're going to plan out, plan out uh, uh, alongside with you how they are going to work through this. Okay? So, once you've identified certain things, you, you may need to begin to uh, find appropriate steps to reach this goal together. All right. Like, for example, maybe he's understood, he has a, the thought process needs to be different. OK, so he knows, OK, alcohol cannot um, cannot uh, make me uh, cope with with my disappointment. OK, maybe that's the wrong belief he's identified and he's identified he's probably saying he's disputed that and he says okay whenever i am feeling this way i should probably talk to somebody i should maybe get support from a spiritual uh, help or a friend who can pray with me all right so this is the the thought process is alcohol cannot help i should do something else i should do something else to help me to face my disappointment so this is still in the thought process right now it is now it is where he's going to take actions for it so so that may be one of the first goal okay i need to change my thought process so here is where you're going to take certain steps so it may be changing a thinking to reach this goal so as a counselor what are you doing you're building those options where you're helping them to 
stepwise break down a problem thought into figuring out a solution. So it could be in some way like this, you're saying, OK, this is where you take a specific goal. OK, this is this S. You would have heard of these smart goals, right? So S is taking a specific goal. So you're saying, OK, let's work on how you can dispute this thought every time you feel it. So that's the that's the goal. Oh, all right. So so let's move it step by step. What are some of the things that you could probably look at? So we're going to look at measurable goals, right? So we, we he he may say, okay, first and foremost, I would like to uh, see how often I feel like this. So it may be they may be just jotting down, taking a journal of how often do I begin to feel this disappointment? In a day, I feel the disappointment at certain, certain periods of time. Or um, I, I have figured the, the, the triggers that makes me feel this way, all right? And so they may jot this down in their diary, and they may say, OK, I, you know, I, I want to check in the next one week um, how many triggers I've had, how many times I felt this way, and uh, maybe if I'm able to handle my thought or become aware of the thought at least two times every day, I think it is an improvement from next time. So they may measure it and say, OK, maybe by next week, I don't want to be thinking of it as much as I did as I am right now, because I'm aware of it. Maybe, you know, probably out of the 10 times I do it, I, I know that I can minimize it two times. So maybe it's only eight times I do it. So, so you're making it measurable for them to be able to get somewhere you make it achievable so not uh, and uh, when we're saying achievable goals we're also helping them see how they can achieve it right and so they may come up with very very lofty ideas um that okay from now on um, um uh, you know i will i will ensure that uh, uh, that uh, i don't go to college because if i go to college then I, I have a lots of lots of friends uh, with me, and uh, th then you know I may feel the urge, but that's not achievable. That's not something that is possible, right? Because he does need to go go ahead with his life. So how achievable are these loads, uh, these goals? So finding certain ways, maybe maybe you know helping them to say, okay, uh, is that something that is practical? Is that something that is realistic? Again, that's that's where you'll get into realistic goals. Is that something that is realistic? And then working alongside with them, maybe it's it may be better. Here is again appropriate steps. You're working with them. Maybe I'll find a friend who I can get support from. Every time I feel the urge, I will call up this friend, or I will go sit with this friend, or I will do X, Y, Z. That will help me to figure this out. And making it time bound in a sense of okay, uh, I, I'd like to uh, try and see this for the next one week or try and look at it for the next one month. So every goal that they may have, whether it is about the thinking, it's about their feeling, about it is their behavior, there need to be steps towards it. You have to take a counselee through the steps of how they would like to work through that. Because otherwise, they may say, okay, I know I should change my thinking, but if you are not working alongside with them on the how to do of it on finding those specific ways how do you measure it how do you be how can you achieve it what are what is it realistically what is the time that you're looking at what are the steps towards it it becomes a lot more strenuous for the person okay now uh, we will take we'll take an example of um, uh, We'll take an example from from Dennis's case. Now, now let's let's look at Dennis. Dennis is um, there are there are multiple goals he's taken here. Okay, so the goal is one. He decides. He says, okay, in order to deal with my drinking, I would want I'll go in for a rehabilitation program, right? So that's one of the steps that he's he's uh, thought about. So that's one area. The second is how would he like to handle stress? Maybe that's another area that we may need to break down his step break down the the steps towards next is what are his what what could there be hobbies or other kind of things that he could do um, in order to keep his mind occupied from uh, you know from 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 drinking or the next goal is how do you how does he spend the weekends um, uh, what kind of friends does he choose from from there so what what are you helping him to do is to make make um, different steps and these are probably four goals that he's he's bought about okay and 
let's say if it's a thought, if it's a thought that he would want to change, what would you do? You would ask him to maybe write it down and replacing it with the truth of God's word, right? So that again becomes another process that he is doing, as I had said, you know, as I said. So first, first initially, he may need to find out what, sorry. Okay, so first he may need to identify the thought, he may need to find the triggers of the thought, and then maybe replace it. And so then he does that for a week, or he does that for some point of time, and then he comes back and discusses it. So just breaking down the steps, whether it is a physical um, a behavioral change he needs to make, whether it's a thought process he needs to do, whether it is taking control over the emotions that he's going, whatever it is, you are helping them break it down into further steps so that it becomes a lot more doable for them. Okay. Now, once you're able to do that, what are you doing? You're also getting to develop certain reinforcements. Now, what do you mean by reinforcements? Reinforcements are things that they are helped to uh, continue their, their journey, right? You're, you're giving them a feeling that they have accomplished something, that they are uh, they're, they're doing a good job of it, they're working towards something. So they, they, they basically have a good feeling that they can do it. And so how how do you how are you ensuring that is you're developing other kind of reinforcements around that will help them to stick to that goal to continue with that action point that uh, they, they have agreed for themselves okay so in this it may be you know uh, the counselee begins to feel that you know something is going about when they can have maybe a support person. It's probably a friend, right? Or or maybe it's his mother, or maybe it's a sibling, or maybe it's people in the church group. So helping him attach uh, these goals or these action points with someone. So certain questions we'd ask is, who all do you think would um, would uh, would notice? that things are different with you. So he says, yes, my mother would notice things are different. My friend would notice that these are different. Okay. Or you may ask, who all do you think can support you through these uh, goals that you are attempting to accomplish? So he may give you two, three, two, three people. And so then, you know, getting, getting to that place of uh, finding those reinforcements. Or it can be in any other form. It can be, let's say, you know, um, uh, let's say that once you stay clean for two weeks, maybe you should reward yourself somehow maybe going for a movie with friends or you know being able to do something uh, that that helps you feel the the sense that 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 you have been able to work through something so in order to do this you need to review periodically you're actually reviewing with your counselee about how maybe a week went by after you have spoken to them to see how much they've been able to achieve how much they've been able to to work work through so that reinforcement pattern often becomes very very helpful as they as they proceed through these uh, through working to these through these problems okay next is uh, even as you as you've discussed discuss this you're preparing them to begin to implement it okay so what all do they need like he said he wants to go to a rehabilitation center so you may need to look around to see, OK, if you're going to a rehabilitation, what are the steps you need to take? Uh, he may say, OK, I need to first and foremost find out the, num uh, the different numbers of different rehabilitation centers. I may need to find call them up and speak to them. I may need to look at the kind of uh, resources I need in order to be able to uh, get in admission over there. Or uh, emotionally, it is, you know, while I'm doing this, while I'm there, I may need the support and help of somebody else. Who shall I connect with? Uh, who could I could I get that support and um, help from? Or intellectual resources. So whatever, whatever it it is there, whatever is needed for that step, you are helping them to implement that to come to that place of doing that uh, that that step forward. And so you're formulating. You're actually planning it out for them in your counseling room so that you know there is a task that they can go back and do. Never leave uh, things open-ended for them because sometimes they may have a difficulty to, to put to package everything together. And 
you know, even as I'm uh, as we're discussing this, it almost looks like it's very simple to do. Okay, help them with their thoughts, help them with their behavioral. Maybe for some people, you have to do it at one at a time. Maybe initially it is only behavioral. Then it may be the thought process. Then it may be their their uh, emotions. Or so it, so it may not all be done together, but you, it is packed and packaged very very differently and formulated step by step for them okay so you you formulate every step alongside with them so in dennis's maybe the first step is you know he's reading about different support groups and deciding which one to join so so you're you're, you're asking those questions what why when where uh how yeah I think I, I said all the, all of that. Yeah. So you're you're getting them to begin to planning it, even as they are going to do, uh, going to figure that out. So you're helping them to formulate that initial step before that before they can they can step forward. Now they may do that, and then they may come back. The next thing is a feedback. A feedback is is very important in counseling sessions. Um, even with the smallest of movement that's happened, or even with the smallest of change that's happened, um, it's important as a counselor, we recognize that event. So sometimes, you know, people come back and say, no, nothing has happened, nothing has changed, okay? And that can itself, that, that very word in itself brings about a lot of dejection for the counselor, right? So it's important to come, all right, despite, look back. So you, the general question I ask is, okay, look back at the seven days. And out of the seven days, which was, which was even a 5% better than the rest, okay? In that way, what are you doing? is you are helping them refocus on something that they have actually done or actually accomplished. Okay, because the minute that you say, okay, five, even 2% is nothing, there's 98% you haven't done. Okay, now you're a gone case. So remember, uh, initial times, they are, they may not be as motivated. So it is in, needed to to have that recognition for even the smallest of achievements. So the, the general thing I do is, if they say nothing has worked, I say, okay, look back at the last seven days, tell me which day was the was better than the rest. So they will say, okay, actually that one day was okay. I didn't uh, think of it uh, 10 times, I thought of it eight times. I said, wow, very good. What made you, uh, made you get that kind of a success and achievement of, of that day. So that in itself helps them to have a more positive talk rather than something that's a more solution filled talk than a, um, what do you say, uh, a problem talk, okay? So continue with that feedback. That's extremely important, you, you know, even as we process uh, helping them, okay? Uh, maybe before I get into the caring confrontation, we will, just any any questions here? If not, uh, we could uh, just take some break. We could take a break and come back. Any questions here? Yes, Divya, go ahead. Yeah, thank you, ma'am. Uh, it might be covered in the further uh, sessions, but I just want to know, like, in what frequency do you usually meet the with the counselee and uh, also how do you rate an improvement that that uh, as you said uh, they might not be uh, very positive about the changes that is happening or may not be even aware about it so uh -huh. uh, how do you rate the improvement and how do you gauge like uh, in what what frequencies you need to meet them or uh -huh. the sessions uh -huh. you need to take up with them yeah Mm -hmm. So, so one of the things um, what I follow basically is, um, as best as possible, I try to work alongside with the counselee in even finding the next time to discuss or to talk. Right. So, uh, something that I would I, I'd say is, you know, uh, maybe at the end of the session, I would say is, you know, how helpful has this session been? Or what would you want as as our next step? So I said, no, I, I want to meet again. And, um, you know, I want to want it to be in regular frequencies. So generally, I, I think 
in between sessions, it's good that you have some space because it helps them to think and it helps them to recollect back whatever we've spoken. So, so that's I generally take it with what the council leaders say. Okay, some say, you know, I think we can talk only up to two weeks, but but in a case like this, you may need to meet much more often. You know, when someone who's coming with a real crisis, it's generally done more often, maybe once or uh, twice in a week or um, uh, to, to that effect. Okay, but then if 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 the the concern or if you do find um, they're, they're very, um, uh, what do you say, the very demeanor is a lot more calmer and, you know, they're able to handle through, then you, you may space it out a little bit more. Uh, okay, you asked for the measure of, um, okay, can we come back to this question maybe after a break? It's 10.51. A measure of improvement is something we will we'll, we'll begin with in our next hour. So we'll just take a break and we'll come back at, uh, it's 10.51 and my clock, it's, so we'll come back by 11.01. Okay, thank sure. you. Thank you.